Hi, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. In this video, we're going to see how Photoshop Elements' Magnetic Lasso tool works. I'm using Photoshop Elements 12 for this video. The Magnetic Lasso tool shares a place in the toolbox with the regular Lasso tool and the Polygonal Lasso tool. So, click on whichever Lasso tool you see in the toolbox, and then go down to the Tool Options and click on the Magnetic Lasso tool. Obviously, it's the one that has a magnet on it, and now that's the active tool. The Magnetic Lasso tool works best at selecting objects that have lots of contrast to their background. Like this image I have open of this pink flamingo on a green background. To give you an idea how this tool works, I'm going to make a selection around the head of my flamingo. I'll start up here and click once. That sets my starting point. Now I just clicked once and released the mouse. So you don't have to continue to hold down the mouse button. You just drag your mouse around the area that you want to select. As I drag around the head, you can see that it adds points. And the selection line is snapping to the edge. And it doesn't matter if I go a little on the inside or a little on the outside of the edge. It still snaps the line right to the edge. And you can complete or close your selection two different ways. One way would be to place the cursor right over the original starting point, and when you see that tiny circle appear next to your cursor, that indicates that you can click once to close the selection. So there you see the little circle, and if I were to click now, the selection would be closed. Or if at any time you double click, elements will connect the point where you double click to your original starting point to close your selection. So if I go back here a ways and double click, the selection is completed as indicated by the marching ants. I'm going to press Command D on a Mac or it would be Control D on a PC to deselect that. Like the other two lasso tools, I prefer to use this tool with the crosshairs icon. So I'm going to press the caps lock key on my keyboard to switch to that. Notice that there's a circle around the crosshairs. Let me move that out here so we can see it better. The size of the circle determines how far from the crosshairs the magnetic lasso will detect edges. That edge detection distance is controlled by this width setting in the tool options. Right now it's at 10, and if I crank it up to 100 or so, and place my cursor over the photo, you can see how much bigger it is. That's way too big for this photo, so I'm going to move that slider back to around 10. There's another way to change the size of the cursor, and it's the same way that you can change the size of the brush tool. And that's by pressing the left bracket key to make it smaller, or the right bracket key to make it larger. I'm going to make it a little bigger. Each time I press the right bracket key, the circle gets a little bigger. And you can see the number for the width setting goes up by one pixel each time I press it. I'm going to make the width 20 pixels. Now that size isn't set in stone, it just seems like a nice comfortable size for this selection. It'll depend on each individual image. I recommend starting with the default size, which is 10 pixels, and then adjusting from there if you need to. I'm going to click my first point over on the left here. And I'm going to place it right kind of on the edge of where the background and the flamingo's body meet. And now I can just quickly drag along that edge. But notice down here where the body and the neck meet, the selection line kind of cut off the corner short and included some of the green background. That's characteristic of the magnetic lasso tool when there's a sharp turn in the direction of the edge. So I'm going to press the delete key to get rid of those last few points. So we can start over before that sharp corner. What you can do if you see that happen is to manually enter a point right at the intersection. So I'll place my crosshairs on that spot and then click. And it sets a point right there. And now I can just keep dragging around the edge. When I get to the bottom edge of the photo, there's this area that goes inside of the edge of the flamingo. So I'll delete points until I get back to the place right before that area. And I just have to delete a couple points. Now I'll approach that area slowly, and as soon as I see it go off course, right there, I'll back off a little bit 
until I, I can get my cursor right back on the edge of the flamingo and the background and then I'll manually click to set a point there and then I'll move ahead a little bit more and set another point and maybe I'll set one more manually so I click three times and that manually put those three points onto my selection line so it kind of locked the selection onto the area that I wanted it to. And once I get past that trouble spot, I can just start dragging along the edge like before. Now at the bottom of my photo, his leg goes all the way to the very edge of the photo. I'm going to move my cursor beyond the edge of the photo and click once to manually set a point. And Elements knows to put that point on the edge of the photo instead of outside the photo where I clicked and I'm going to stay outside the photo and go to the other side of the leg and click again to set a point there. And now I'll just continue dragging along the edge until I get to the left side of the photo. And like on the bottom, my flamingo goes right up to the edge. So I'll do the same thing as before. I'll go a little beyond the photo's edge and click once to add a point. Now I'm going to start dragging up and I'll stay outside the photo in that gray area. And you can see Elements is adding points and giving me a pretty straight line up the side of the photo's edge. When my line gets up to the top of the flamingo's body, I'll click once to add a point there, and then I'll place my cursor over my starting point until I see that little circle appear, letting me know that I can click to close the selection. Now there's this area of green background down here that I don't want to be part of my selection, but because it was isolated from the rest of the background, it did get included. I can fix that by pressing the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC and click somewhere along that edge. So make sure you keep the Alt or Option key down and as you click, and I'm going to click right up here at the top. Then I'm going to release the Option key after I click and start dragging along that edge. Once I get back to my starting point, I'll watch for that little circle to appear and I'll click once to close it. Now that area has been removed from my selection. We saw earlier how as we're making our selection and then we notice that elements goes off the edge that we want to select, that we can delete those last few points to get back to the problem area and then manually click along our edge to lock our selection line along that area. But what if you get off course but don't notice until you're well past the bad part or maybe even have completed your selection already? Well, if you're still working on the selection but you're quite a ways from the messed up part, I would just continue and finish off the selection because you don't want to delete a bunch of points to get back to that spot. In fact, I noticed a few bad areas of my selection. One area is around the beak. Notice on the left edge of my photo that the selection doesn't quite go all the way out to the edge. It's so close it might not matter, but it gives me an opportunity to show you how you can deal with those situations. And the secret to fixing those types of things is to switch to a different selection tool to add or subtract from your selection. Just because I use the magnetic lasso tool to make a selection doesn't mean I can't use a different selection tool to adjust it. Let's deal with the beak problem first. The first question you need to ask yourself is, do I need to add to my selection or subtract from my selection? In the case of this beak, I can see that I have to add to the selection to include the tip of it. The next question is, which selection tool should I use? I think to add that little section of the beak, I could use either the regular lasso tool or the polygonal lasso tool. If you're not familiar with how those tools work, watch my videos on them, which includes information for adding and subtracting from selections. I think I'll use the polygonal lasso tool. So I can go down to the tool options and click on the polygonal lasso tool to make it active. Now I'll place my cursor somewhere close to the area I want to add, but I want to make sure that I start inside of the selected area. Notice that my cursor changes appearance when I place it inside of the selected area. A general rule for the selection tools is that if you want to add to a selection, you need to press the Shift key. So I'll press down the Shift key, and you can see that my cursor changes and has a little plus sign next to it indicating that I'm in Add To mode. I'm going to click once right on that spot. As soon as I make that first click, I can release the Shift key 
and I'm going to move my cursor towards the area I want to add, but I want to overlap a little of the original selection line so that it ties in seamlessly. So once I get over my selection line, I'll click again to add another point, and then I'll just click along that edge until I've gone over all of it, and then I move my cursor back inside of the original selection and go over my starting point until I see the little circle and then I know I can click once to complete. And that section is added to my original selection. If you need to subtract from the selection, check out my video on the regular or polygonal lasso tool which explains how to do that. Now let's look at that left edge. Remember the first question you need to ask yourself is, do I need to add to my selection or subtract from it? I want to include that little strip along the edge of the photo, so the answer is I want to add to my selection. And the second question is, which selection tool should I use? In this case, I decide to use the rectangular marquee tool because basically that section that I want to add is a skinny little rectangular shape. So I'll click on the rectangular marquee tool in the toolbox to make it active. I'll place my cursor near the area that I want to add and make sure that I'm overlapping the original selection by placing my cursor right on the selection edge. Now I'll press the shift key down and I see the plus sign appear letting me know that I'm in add to mode. As I hold down the shift key, I'll press and hold down the mouse button. After I have the mouse button pressed down, I can release the shift key and I'll stay in the add to mode as indicated by the plus sign. Make sure you continue holding down the mouse button as you drag over the area that you want to add. I want to make sure that I go out beyond the edge of my photo into this gray section because Photoshop Elements will then go all the way out to the edge of the photo. And I'm going to make sure that I intersect with that bottom corner down here, that corner of my original selection, and then I'll release the mouse button to complete. And now you can see that my selection is right to the very edge of the photo. Some people don't even bother fixing the selection as they make it. They just get back on track as best they can, and then after they close their selection, they add or subtract any areas that are bad. So that ends this lesson on using the Magnetic Lasso tool in Photoshop Elements. Make sure you give it a try and add it to your bag of tricks for making selections. Until next time, this is Rick saying take care.